We start in Washington, where the US Senate has approved a bill to suspend the government debt limit, which removes the threat of a default on repayments, which could have caused widespread disruption to the world's financial markets. The Senate vote had a degree of bipartisan support, with 63 votes in favour and 36 opposed, although most Republicans did vote against. It had already been approved in the House of Representatives and will now be signed into law by President Biden. He described it as a big win for the economy and the American people. Here's how the leading Democrat in the Senate, Chuck Schumer, reacted to the vote. Now Democrats are feeling very good tonight. We've saved the country from the scourge of default, even though there were some on the other side who wanted default, wanted to lead us to default. We may be a little tired, but we did it. So we're very, very happy. Default was the giant sword hanging over America's head. Well, here's a reminder of what's in the deal. Firstly, suspending the debt ceiling until 2025. That means the government could borrow more money to pay its bills for the next two years. There would also be a 10-year freeze on spending, except for defence, whose budget will increase to $886 billion. Meanwhile, unspent COVID funds will be returned. The Congressional Budget Office estimates that this will amount to the government recovering around $30 billion. Welfare benefits will be slightly tinkered with, but there will be no major overhaul there. There will be funds to help the Internal Revenue Service to enforce the tax code, though, on America's richest. And new rules will make it easier for both fossil fuels and renewable energy projects to get licenses. Well, our North America correspondent, Jessica Parker, has been following the story. So this piece of legislation went through the House, the lower chamber, now the Senate, the upper chamber, and it will proceed to Joe Biden's desk, probably the most predictable part of this process. We know exactly what's going to happen. He will sign it into law. And this follows, of course, extensive wrangling and negotiations between senior Republicans and the White House over this debt ceiling deal. Interestingly, Joe Biden is going to address the nation on Friday night, and he's been keen to try and demonstrate that this agreement contains some wins for him. He's talked about protecting core government programs that are a priority for him, investment in clean energy. But of course, for Joe Biden, he was very keen will be very relieved that the US isn't going to default on Monday as the US Treasury warned it might because it would have happened on his watch even if he had tried to blame Republicans. So that will be a relief for the White House and it's a two-year deal so it means it lives on beyond the next presidential race. He wouldn't want to have had a similar fight like this as he bids for re-election. For the Republicans, the House Speaker Kevin McCarthy has talked a lot about how he's won spending curbs, welfare reforms, and how the White House didn't even want to do any kind of negotiation over the debt ceiling. They just wanted a clean debt ceiling deal. So he's been trying to chalk up victories there. But the truth is that there are people from both the Democrats and the Republicans who've been critical of the agreement that was reached. And this whole episode has once again exposed not just those ideological and political divisions between the Republicans and the Democrats, but within those parties as well.